Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Gravity, gravity, gravity. Gravity makes things fall. But on this episode, I'm doing everything I can to defy gravity. Oh, you win this one, gravity. From a hoop glider, to an egg drop, to a hover balloon, it's a gravity-defying dance party. All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites. Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. My name is Phil, and today on Science Max, we're going to be looking at gravity. What goes up must come down. Today... <laughs> gravity is the force that makes things fall. <laughs> Towards the ground. But just because it's a force of nature doesn't mean that we have to listen to it. No! Today on Science Max, experiments at large, we're gonna use everything in the power of science to defy gravity! Haha! <laughs> we are going to be making a hoop glider. Now, hoop gliders may not look like much, but they fly just like paper airplanes. Woohoo! And here's how you can make a hoop glider. Here's how you can make a hoop glider all your own. This is what you need. Index cards, scissors, straw, ruler, pencil, and of course, science tape, which is just like regular tape, except you use this kind of tape for science. So, here's how you do it. Take your index card and cut it into three equal lengths. Take two strips, and you take your science tape, and you tape those two strips and make a hoop out of it. And with the small strip, you wanna make another hoop. Now, what you wanna do is take your straw. Now this straw has a little scoop at the end and that's not very aerodynamic, so we're gonna get rid of that. Ooh, maybe it was kinda aerodynamic. All right, now that we've got the straw, you have to align the hoop and the straw together. So here's what I like to do. Take some science tape and stick it on the straw and then align it so that it's perfectly straight, and then stick it on. Looks straight to me, all right? The small hoop also has to be perfectly aligned with the first hoop. So again, put the tape on the straw first, then align them up, and then start looking down through it, make sure it's aligned. There. Once you have it all taped together, you're done, your hoop glider. And it flies just like a paper airplane. Boom! Awesome. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna we're gonna, oh yeah, I gotta clean that up. We are going to max out the hoop glider. I'm gonna go meet Sonia at the Ontario Science Center and mm -hmm. we are going to max out the hoop glider into a giant version. We'll probably have to change the materials we use because oh, I don't think we can get a straw that big or a cardboard, but still, we can figure it out. All right, here I go. Aha! Oh, hi, Phil! Good! What? Pardon? You want me to help you with an experiment? Sonia, I came in. Phil, you came in you, here? I came are you in. okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, let me show you that. Okay. This is what I would like to max out. It was in my pocket when I fell, so. What is it, that? It, it's a hoop glider. It was a hoop glider. So, how do we max this out? First, we're gonna need a larger tube. To large replace tube. the straw, yeah. Exactly, and we're gonna need two hoops. So, we need something that's flexible that will convert into a hoop. Okay, that's great. So, uh, why don't we get started? Sounds good. All right, high fives. Right. 
you may recognize this. It is a spring, yes, good for you. But did you know that springs can defy gravity? Whoa. Gravity def defy. Gravity defy. Gravity def Look at it fly. Defying. Okay, not exactly, but what if I was to hold the spring like this and let it go? What'll happen? It'll fall. Yes, it'll fall. That's, that is true. But while it's falling, what happens to this end? Does it stay in one place? Does it go up or does it go down? Let's find out. I'll bring this in so you can really see it. Okay, ready? Watch close. Did you see? Did you know? Okay, tell you what. We'll watch it again, this time in slow motion. See? The bottom doesn't move, and here's why. When the top of the spring is released, gravity and the tension of the spring are pulling on it. The bottom of the spring is being pulled down by gravity and up by the tension of the spring. These forces cancel out, stopping the bottom of the spring from falling until the top reaches it. Until there's no more tension, and then the top passes the bottom and the whole thing That is how it works. But here is the real question. Will it happen differently with a longer spring? Huh? Well, I just happen to have a longer spring! Let's max it out! Don't tangle it. So, now that I'm up high on this fire escape, let's test it out. Okay, three, two, one, go! A longer spring still has the same forces working on it. The tension of the spring pulling it up and gravity pulling it down. No matter what size of spring, these forces cancel out for the bottom of the spring until the top meets up with it. So there you go, an almost gravity-defying spring! <laughs> uh, hey, there's no door handle on this door. I guess I have to take the stairs. Whoa. Sonia and I are maxing out the hoop glider out of bigger and better materials. This is the largest tube I have, right? A giant ABS pipe and some bendable metal to make into hoops. Then we attach them all together and... Okay, big hoop is done. And little hoop is also done. Awesome. Not bad. Not bad at all. Super solid. And that's the thing. We have pretty heavy materials, so it might not fly as well as we'd like. But something heavy can always be good, right? <sighs> oh, no. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See how solid it is? It's pretty solid. No damage whatsoever. You want to test it? I think we should. OK. I'm excited. We take our plastic and metal hoop glider outside to test it and... Ready? Ready. One. Two, three! Huh. huh. It didn't really fly, did it? Sonia and I made a very solid design, but the problem with it became pretty obvious. Yeah. It's just too heavy. Well, that's what science is. Back to the drawing board. Here's something fun you can do if you ever get your hands on a helium balloon. Now, helium balloons float up, not because they defy gravity, but because they're lighter than air. It's because the heavier air around it actually falls past the balloon, and that ends up pushing the balloon up. But what if this helium balloon wasn't lighter than air or heavier than air? It was exactly the same. This is what I like to do. Just take a helium balloon with a long ribbon, and a bunch of paper clips, and adding a little bit of weight every time. And what we want to do is make this balloon neutrally buoyant. That means it won't go up or down, but it will be neutral. We want to check it every once in a while. Let's see, three paper clips is clearly not enough. Five paper clips is, ooh, five paper clips is pretty close. It still might float down. So you want to take off just a little bit of weight Maybe about there. Watch this. You just take the balloon, 
and you put it somewhere, and it stays. It stays put. It doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. It's attached to nothing. Now, let's max it out. Huh. I had a big balloon, and it was a, uh, we had a, oh, there. Ha, 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 ha. A giant balloon. And look, it's a great paper towel delivery device. Say, did you want some paper towel? Here you go. Science. Yeah, don't worry about Ramona. Just put him up high. Put him up, yeah, higher. Good. Hey. Gravity. Gravity. Gravity makes things fall. Well, where do they fall? They fall down. Oh. Towards the center of the Earth. Gravity. It fell, didn't it? So, the Earth causes gravity, right? Well, yes. Gravity! Oh, not... Come on. Everything that has mass has gravity. Gravity! But the Earth has so much mass that the gravity produced by everything else is like nothing. I mean, forget about it. But let's say I was in space with, uh, with this chicken. <laughs> I would have gravity, and I could exert a gravitational force on this chicken. And if I get my angles right, I might be able to get the chicken to orbit me. Like, like a moon. Behold, my chicken moon. Huh? Gravity. But let's get serious. What causes gravity? We don't know. Ah! But what we do know is that without gravity, there would be no universe as we know it. No you, no me, no chicken moon. I'd miss my chicken moon. Chicken moon, you what? Gravity. Like it or not, the universe wouldn't exist without it. You like the sign? I'll give you a good deal. Uh, half off. Back to our hoop glider, which was too heavy. Here's what I don't get. This is heavy, but I can still pick it up and throw it. Yeah. An airplane is way heavier. I could never pick up an airplane, but that can fly. And that's because airplanes have engines, so it has a constant source of thrust. When we throw it, we just have an initial source of thrust, so we're throwing it. Eventually, loses its energy, therefore, it falls to the ground. It falls. I see. So we need something that's light. Light. And something that's strong. And strong. Okay, well, let's see what we can find. All right. Sonia and I try a plastic tube and some heavy-duty paper. We make hoops and attach them with some duct tape and run outside to try it out. Hoop glider dance! Okay. Three, two, one! I throw the hoop glider and although it doesn't keep flying forever, it goes much further than our first version and also further than I could have just thrown the pipe by itself. Pretty good! So we've done a good job of making something that flies. Why don't we make a couple different kinds out of different materials and we'll see if we can get one that flies even better than this. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, okay, let's do it. <laughs> Sony and I have created a pretty good maxed out hoop glider, but we wanted to see if different materials would make an even better one. Sonia made a much lighter version. This time I used cardboard. And I, I made this, made a slightly heavier one. Let's do it. Okay, three, yeah. two, one, go! Not bad. My turn. Here we go. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> that didn't really go very far at all, did it? No. Okay, so now we can measure it against the one that we threw before. And see that went pretty far. This went pretty far to see yeah. if we've got a better design here. Here we go. Right? Wow. Awesome! So, heavy one, no. Light one, no. Interesting. Uh, no. This design seems to be the best one. I keep thinking about how you were talking about thrust. Yep. All the thrust that we can put in is just what we can put in with one throw. Yeah. What if we could give it more thrust than that? How can we do that? Um, I don't know, like some sort of uh, slingshot or something. Like, a, it'd have to be a pretty big slingshot. A pretty though. big slingshot. 
you think but we I can think make that it? sounds great, though. I think we make a big slingshot for this. Why not? OK, high five. Let's All do right. it. This is an egg. Eggs do not like to be dropped. Oh, fortunately, we can use the power of science to design something that'll keep the egg safe as it falls. Behold, my egg drop contraptions. The thing I really like about this experiment is there's no wrong way to do this. You can come up with any design you want and see if it works. This one here is a bunch of helium balloons. This structure is just to keep the helium balloons on so the egg can touch down very gently. Here it goes. Whoa. <laughs> and, and the egg is unharmed, miraculously sound. That one worked really well. Success. This is a giant helium balloon that I think will work pretty much the same way because I think this balloon will drop just slowly enough that the egg can actually just touch and nothing will happen. Um, so that didn't work. <laughs> and then there's this one, which has no slowing at all. It's all designed to just absorb the impact. And the idea is that the cone will crumple and absorb the force when it hits the bottom. Oh, no! Oh, no. I think it would have worked if it hadn't turned in the air, but it did, and... Well, I guess the egg is completely broken. So I'd call that one a fail. This one is the parachute. You see the egg has been nestled into this foam container. And this is a parachute that will hopefully slow the egg down. Woohoo! Uh-oh. Whoa. Over, over, good. And ah, <laughs> that one seemed to work well. Yep, the egg is totally fine. <laughs> the parachute worked. All right, egg drop experiment, totally fun experiment to do. But the question is, how do we max it out? And the answer is pumpkin drop. <laughs> Same thing, except with a pumpkin instead of an egg. Come on. OK. <laughs> all right, pumpkin drop with everything attached all at once. OK, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. So what we've learned from this is the heavier something is, the more force is acting on it from gravity, which means the harder it is to slow down when it's falling. OK, fair enough. You win this one, gravity. But I'll beat you next time. I'm, I'm going to get a broom. Being a chef is my absolute passion, and cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker. <laughs> Delicious. Nothing is more important to have fresh than your seafood. It's what makes the difference between a fresh fish... <laughs> ah, ..and one that isn't so fresh. <laughs> <coughs> if you live by the ocean, you probably know that the water gets high tide and low tide. Look closely, it's the same location. Amazing! Oh. But did you know that this is caused by the gravity of the moon and the sun? See, this cookie is the Earth. And this little happy fellow is me. Hello! <coughs> and this string represents the water around the Earth. If we didn't have gravity to worry about, the water would all be equally deep around the Earth. But here comes the moon, this mushroom. Now, the moon has gravity, and that pulls the oceans towards it a little bit, like this. And that creates high tide there, and low tide here, and a little bump of high tide on the other side of the Earth. And as the Earth rotates and I'm on it, I experience low tide and high tide and low tide and high tide. Very interesting. But there's another factor, the sun, or this lemon. Now, the sun also affects the tides, but not as much as the moon. Now, the sun does not affect the tides as much as the moon because it's much further away, but it still has an effect. If the sun was here, then the tides would be pulled away 
a little bit like that, and the tides would be less severe. But if the moon and the sun line up, like over here, you'd get a very, very high tide and very, very low tide. So there you are. That's how the tides are affected by the gravity of the moon and the sun. Mmm, delicious. I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on Cooking with Science. Our maxed out hoop glider was working pretty well. That was pretty amazing. Good. Here we go. But we could only give it so much thrust by throwing it. Yeah. So we came up with the perfect science max solution. Our giant slingshot. <laughs> All right. We pull the bungee cord back and hook it onto our hoop glider. I am ready to fire. Count me down. Three, two, launch it. <laughs> <laughs> Our slingshot is amazing. By giving the glider more thrust, that is, more energy at the beginning so it's going faster when we launch it, the glider soars through the air and flies a long way. That was great! So there you go, giant hoop glider! Yeah! Science Max! Experiments at large, nicely done. Nice. What more could you ask for? Well, it's my turn! Hey, see you next time. I'm the marker. Take eight. My goodness. I play the wobble. The wobble. The wobble. Forgot my line. Forgot my line. Going back down. Wobble, 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 wobble. Hello? Hello? Hoop glider central calling. Yes? You were having problems with your hoop glider? Oh, what's wrong with it? Oh, you're using it as a phone. Yes, well, that's your first mistake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Today on Science Max, we're, I forgot to tell you my name. My name is, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs>